Hey everybody, this is our first review. What I'm gonna be doing is for each of our problem sets, I'm gonna be making a video similar to flipped lesson where I'm gonna go through it. Now what you need to be doing is first pause this video and have all your problems done. You need to try your best, use your equations, and use those previous flipped lessons and the reading. Then when you finish them, you should be going through this video, checking your answers, and then following up with me for any questions. For our first problem, we are just going to look at some really basic vocab. So to start this problem, you need to draw it out. So a wave travels along a stretched horizontal rope. The vertical distance, underline that, from crest to trough for this wave is 13 centimeters and the horizontal distance from crest to trough is 28 centimeters. What is the wavelength and the amplitude of the wave? So let's just draw out a nice little wave here. Okay. And let's try to fill in what's going on. So for this problem, it says the 13 centimeters is from the vertical distance from, from crest to trough, okay? So that's saying from here all the way up here is 13 centimeters. So pretty straightforward, but then we have the second one. The horizontal distance from crest to trough is 28 centimeters. So that does not mean it is this way. What it means is that it's from here approximately to the next trough, okay? So a little bit funky and kind of there to throw you off, okay? So first ask for what is the wavelength? Okay, so I'm gonna have to use this number. And remember, for wavelength, my symbol, which for some reason I always make, <laughs> I always write it down wrong, is our lowercase lambda, okay? So if you look from this one, it's only half. So I just need to do 28 centimeters times two, which will give me 56 centimeters, okay? Now for my amplitude, my amplitude is not from crest to trough. It is only half of it, okay? So we need to take 13 centimeters, divide that by two. So I'm gonna get 6.5 centimeters. Awesome. Okay, next up, let's talk about tsunamis. This problem is actually very realistic because they use simulations to figure out where tsunami waves are gonna land so that they can better prepare during this natural disaster. So a tsunami is traveling across deep water with a speed of 750 kilometers per hour and has a wavelength, remember lambda, of 310 kilometers. Okay, what is the frequency of such a wave? Okay, so let's use our equations to take out your equation sheet. Remember, we only have one equation for this unit, and so I wrote it backwards, and that is my wavelength equals velocity over frequency. Just so you know, I, I kind of wrote it differently to start because often in your book and other things, it is written like this, okay? Um, so ask for the frequency, so let's continue rearranging this equation while we're at it. And we're gonna have our frequency equals V, velocity or speed, over my wavelength. So from here I can just plug in my numbers. And as usual, checking my units that they all match up. And I'm lucky that they do. And then I'm gonna get 2.42. And that's one over seconds for my frequency, or I could have hertz, okay? Um, now, if we actually look at this, this is a pretty slow-moving one, so this might be an after effect uh, from a tsunami. All right, let's do this super wordy problem. Um, so a 4.5 hertz wave, so that is my frequency, and it has an amplitude of 12 centimeters, and it has a wavelength of 27 centimeters and it travels across a stretched horizontal string. So just imagine um, having a string just flat out and then just making a wave on it. It asks how far does a given peak on the wave travel in a time interval of five seconds? Okay, so right now, let's just think about this. I am gonna convert my period. I'm gonna convert my frequency to period, always a good thing if I see 
that I have time, okay? So this is saying one period. Um, so how far this interval goes is happening in 0.22 seconds, okay? Um, so let's kind of look at this. So I'm trying to figure out how much time that this is going to take, okay? Um, in 0.5 seconds. So I have a time of 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, so we're gonna get started by figuring out in this 0 0.5 seconds, how many periods uh, does it go through? So I'm just gonna make a nice little proportion here and I can figure out it goes through 2.27 sec and this is my number of periods. So I was able to relate those two. Now I need to figure out, okay, for each period, I have it moving this wavelength, okay? So I can just take this and multiply it by 27 centimeters, which is gonna give me 61 centimeters. And I can just keep this in centimeters because, well, I don't have any restrictions, okay? So let's do part B here. So if I tie, a knot on the string, how far does it travel in the same interval? So if I draw a wave right here, and this is moving across, this wave is actually just going up and down, okay? So all I need to do is look at my amplitude. So I have 12 centimeters, okay? And it's going up and down. Uh, so I am just multiplying this by two, and then I'm gonna multiply it by the number of periods, okay? So I'm gonna get 11 centimeters, okay? That's also equal to 1.1 meters, okay? So once again, look at the visuals for these problems because it's really gonna help us, okay? Now for my last part, how would your answers change if the change in the amplitude of the wave was halved? Well, uh, let's Okay, so let's do the last part. And it says, how would your answers to part A and B change if the amplitude was half? So we're taking my amplitude and my original amplitude right here was 12 centimeters. I'm gonna say, what if this changed to six centimeters? So what is this like visually? At first it looks like this, and then we're having it. So I'm just gonna you know, approximate what this is going to look like. So important here. My wavelength, which was part A, is unchanged. And why is this? Very important part here. My vertical and horizontal are different. This is exactly like horizontal motion. Now for part B, my amplitude part would, let's think here, this would change, okay? So big part here, and I feel like it was class, I'd say this 40 times. So the horizontal and vertical are different, just like projectile motion. Pretty cool here. So we have this correlation right now between our waves and then regular motion, okay? When you're done watching this, you've checked your answers, don't forget to click done. It's really the only way that I'm gonna be able to tell what you're doing yourself. Like I said, if you're not sure about something, you want to double check, please, please reach out to me, take a picture of whatever you need to do. We're in this together, everybody.